Hello friends, this video on ecosystem part 13 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So now we are going to introduce the food chain. So here we are going to see how one organism feeds on another organism. And in fact, that is, it is based on that, that we have the levels of consumers. So here we are going to talk about food chain. So what, how do we define food chain? It is a series of living organisms feeding on one another. So here we will see that a sequence of organisms are feeding on one another. Maybe the first organism is eaten up by the second, the second one is eaten up by the third and so on. So that kind of a series is known as a food chain. So on the screen you can see the pictures which represent a very simple food chain where you see the plants are eaten up by this deer and this deer is eaten up by the tiger. So this is a simple food chain where you see a series of three different organisms which feed upon each other. Now one, one simple example, it's plants eaten up by the deer which in turn is eaten up by the lion or the tiger. Now we have to discuss about the various types of food chain. There can be different types of food chains existing in various ecosystems. So broadly there are two types of food chain. So one is called the grazing food chain and the other one is the detritus food chain. So first let us talk about the grazing food chain. What do we mean by grazing food chain? Grazing means to eat, I mean normally we use this term when, some, when an animal is feeding on grass. So that is called grazing. So grazing food chain starts with green plants that is the producers. And that is why we have associated the term grazing with it because a lot of animals will be dependent on plants for their food. So basically a lot of animals will be grazing on plants. So that's how the name came, grazing food chain which is often written as GFC. So here the grazing food chain is somewhat like this. It has the green plants at the first level which is followed by the herbivores which in turn is followed by the carnivores. Now it is not necessary that there will be only three animals involved in a grazing food chain. There can be more. There can be a primary carnivore, a secondary carnivore, a tertiary carnivore and so on. So carnivores can be of multiple levels. But this is how the grazing food chain will look like. So Grazing food chain will always start with the plants and it will end with the carnivores. So macroscopic organisms are involved, so no microscopic organisms are involved. Microscopic in the sense bacteria, fungi, all those organisms are not involved, big organisms are involved. Energy comes from the sun and most of the ecosystem energy will come from the sun with the exception of deep sea ecosystem. Otherwise everywhere it will come from the sun. The next type of food chain is the detritus food chain. Detritus is dead and decaying remains. That is the dead plant and animal remains. That is detritus. So this detritus food chain will involve the decomposers. Right. So here it will start with the decomposers. Decomposers which are also termed as saprotrophs. So these decomposers, what do they do? They secrete some digestive enzymes and help in the breakdown of dead and decaying matter and waste materials and that is how they convert the organic wastes into simple inorganic materials in the form of minerals right so these decomposers and this entire food chain will take place in the soil because the decomposers action take place in the soil we, we already saw the decomposition cycle and we saw that the entire cycle primarily takes place in the soil and therefore this entire food chain will also take place in the soil so one example in this case the microscopic organisms will be involved or the subsoil organisms will be involved. So microscopic organisms like bacteria and fungi the decomposers so they are microscopic organisms and subsoil organisms like earthworm. So earthworm though it is not microscopic but it is a subsoil organisms. So that is how the food chain is 
inside in the DFC that is detritus food chain. So what happens in the soil? For example, these earthworms they will feed upon the dead and decaying matter, and again those dead and decaying matter will be further eaten up by the bacteria or the fungi which are present in the soil. So there is a food chain which is taking place even inside the soil, and that is called the detritus food chain. Now it has been observed that in a terrestrial ecosystem. A larger fraction of energy flows through the DFC that is detritus food chain. So greater amount of energy flows through detritus food chain in terrestrial ecosystem. So let me write it. In terrestrial ecosystem that means those ecosystem which are present on land. In terrestrial ecosystem more energy flow through DFC whereas in case of aquatic ecosystem larger fraction of energy flow will take place through GFC that is grazing food chain. So this is another important point to be noted here. So these are broadly the two types of food chain. So in case of grazing food chain, energy comes from the sun, but in case of detritus food chain, energy comes from the detritus. That is the dead remains of plants and animals, they themselves contain a lot of energy. So they become the source of energy. Decomposition of dead remains takes place in case of detritus food chain. So that we all know that. So now we will talk about the steps in a food chain. So a food chain can involve many different number of steps. It can be a three step food chain, it can be a four step food chain or it can even be a five step food chain. So here we will discuss about the steps in a food chain. So let us look at different food chains with different number of steps. So we will start with the smaller steps that is let's start with a two step food chain. Now one step food chain is actually not possible because we need at least two organisms to, so that one can feed upon the other. Only then a food chain can be formed. So the minimum number of steps that can be involved in a food chain is two. So in a two step food chain what can happen? It will start with the producers and the producers will be eaten up by a herbivore. For example elephant eating up plant. A three step food chain where we have a producer, a herbivore as well as a carnivore. So the plants eaten up by a deer which in turn is eaten up by a tiger. A four step food chain would be somewhat like this which involves a producer, a herbivore, a primary carnivore and a secondary carnivore. So you see here plants eaten up by the goat which in turn is eaten up by the wolf which in turn is eaten up by the lion. You can even have a five step food chain where you have plants eaten up by grasshopper which in turn is eaten up by the frog then eaten up by the snake and the snake is finally eaten up by the hawk. So here what do you have? So here you see this is a primary carnivore, this is a secondary carnivore and this one is a tertiary carnivore. So the levels of carnivores are increasing. Now as the levels of carnivores increase, the number of steps in the food chain increases. And as the number of steps in the food chain increases, the level of consumer is also increasing. So here if you see it just involved the producer and the primary consumer right so this is the primary consumer so here you have primary consumer and secondary consumer here you have primary consumer secondary consumer and tertiary consumer here you have the primary consumer is this one then primary this is secondary consumer this is tertiary consumer and this is quaternary consumer. So the levels of consumer also increases as the steps in a food chain increases. So this is how we can have multiple steps in a food chain. Now let us quickly look at various food chains in various ecosystems. So let us take examples of different ecosystems. So in the first one I have taken the example of a forest ecosystem. So in a forest an ecosystem like this or a food chain like this is very common where a goat is feeding on the grass. This goat in turn is eaten up by a fox or a wolf or a jackal and this jackal is eaten up by the lion. So this is a very common food chain which exists in the forest ecosystem. 
if you look at a pond ecosystem or an ocean ecosystem for example sea or ocean whatever you call it so here you might have the phytoplanktons which act as the producers these phytoplanktons are eaten up by small insects these insects are eaten up by the small fishes and the small fishes in turn are eaten up by the big fishes so this is an a food chain which exists in aquatic ecosystem now let us take another example of an ecosystem say a garden so what happens in a garden in gardens again you have the plants so the plants act as the producers these plants are eaten up so they are being they fed feed the small insects like the green flies now these green flies might be eaten up by small birds like the ladybird and these birds these small birds might be eaten up by bigger birds like hawk so that is how a food a food chain exists in a garden so in a very similar way if you think of any ecosystem and you can actually see the food chains existing in that ecosystem So now we will introduce trophic levels. Now when we talk about the food chain, so each level is indicated as a trophic level. Now why are we doing all this is so that to understand the concept of energy flow becomes easier. So what is trophic level? So each level of a food chain is termed as a trophic level. So that is a terminology which has been associated with a particular level of a food chain. So when I say that a food chain involves three steps, so we basically mean to say that there are three trophic levels involved in that food chain. So here you can see a food chain which has different steps, right? So this is one, two, three, four so there will be four levels involved in this food chain so let us start with the uh, different levels here so here we have taken the example of grass being eaten by the grasshopper which is in turn eaten by the frog then snake and then the hawk so grass is the producer grasshopper is the primary consumer or the herbivore so frog is the secondary consumer or the primary carnivore. Snake is tertiary consumer or secondary carnivore. And hog is tertiary carnivore or quaternary consumer. So these are the various levels of the food chain. These are the different groups of organisms which are present in this food chain. Now let us look at the same food chain in terms of trophic level. So here we will have different trophic levels like this. So which will be the first trophic level? So the first trophic level will be the produce. So the first trophic level will be occupied by the producers and producers are the plants or the autotrophs which can perform photosynthesis and they are the main production center which prepare food for themselves as well as others. Now as you go higher you will see the trophic level also increases. So the second trophic level will be occupied by the grasshopper that is the herbivores. So the second trophic level here will be occupied by the herbivores or the primary consumer. Third trophic level will be occupied by the frog or the carnivores that is maybe the small carnivore or the primary carnivore. Fourth trophic level will be occupied by the secondary carnivore. So this is primary carnivore, this is secondary carnivore and even after this you will have a fifth trophic level and the fifth trophic level will be occupied by the tertiary carnivore. So this is how the trophic level will keep on increasing. So the number of steps involved in, an in a food chain is going to be equal to the number of trophic levels involved in that food chain. So now we have introduced all these terminologies, the different levels of consumers, the different trophic levels and now we will see that how energy will flow from one trophic level to another trophic level. So the lowermost trophic level is the first trophic level which is occupied by producers and as we go higher the level of consumer also increases. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more educational videos with a better experience. Please do not forget to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel for latest updates. Thank you once again.